In this video, I want to revisit a video that I did with the AX8, but we're going to do it with the Axe FX3, talking about the low resonance frequency parameter and how you can use it to optimize your tone when you're using a solid state power amp like this Matrix GT800 effects that I've got here, and a guitar cabinet like this Marshall 4x12. I'm running the Matrix in bridge mode, and I've got the Marshall on the 16 ohm setting. So what I've done is I have made a preset that you guys can download. Scene one is an amp. I'm a rock guy, so I've gone with the Atomica High to test this. There's a looper in there, which is gonna come in handy at the end of this. And there is also a synth block generating a sine wave tone at a low frequency that we can use to basically find the resonant frequency. There's also a little parametric EQ trick that I wanna talk about. And furthermore, we're gonna do all of this on the per preset performance screen, which is a great new feature with the Axe FX3. So first, let's talk about how to find this low resonant frequency. Okay, I've loaded up the preset. You'll notice that my matrix volume control is at about one o'clock. At the moment, I've got output one all the way down. Scene one on this preset is the amp. So I'm not gonna use scene one, I'm gonna use scene two, which is the synth test tone. I've got the output one volume all the way down so that I can speak over this. Let's just zoom in a little bit, shall we? So that we can see the Axe FX3 screen a bit better. What you wanna do is page across to the per preset performance screen. That's not a tongue twister at all. And this way you've got control over the synth frequency on encoder A. So I'll turn that down. And what I'll do is I'll turn output one up on my axe and I'll slowly sweep upwards with the encoder A until I start to have some things moving around. One thing that I do that I've noticed in here is that this like nail file I've got really likes to bounce around. So this is gonna be my uh, litmus test <laughs> at gig volume. I don't know if you carry a nail file around, but you'll notice things around you start to rattle. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna turn the output one volume up and we'll see where this guy starts to rattle around. I don't know if you could hear that over that droning tone, but you could probably see this thing moving around. Uh, so what's the frequency I've got there? It's about 107 Hertz. What I can immediately do on the per preset performance screen is go down to this amp frequency and I'll set this one to 107 Hertz. There we go, that's about close enough. So I found my resonant frequency of 107 Hertz. What we're gonna do next is have a listen to the amp. If I have the resonant frequency low, like at 80, if I have it high, like at 120, and then we'll set it to 107, which was the magic nail file frequency that we found. So once you've done that, what I like to do is dial up the looper. Let's get that guy going. And I've pre-recorded a loop here. What I'm gonna do is turn the power amp on. I have got this guy pretty much at stage volume, so I'm gonna uh, basically move out of the way in a second. But what I'm gonna do is sweep the amp block's low resonant frequency control so that you guys can hear the optimal setting, a lower setting, and a higher setting. I'm miking this with a Shure SM7B, so it's not gonna sound like an amp in the room, obviously, but, well, I say obviously, but that's an ongoing discussion. If you're not used to this, don't expect your amp to sound like this in your room. I'm close micing it just so we can hear the sound of the cabin. Hopefully hear that low resonant frequency. I'm going to uh, kind of get out of the way now and do this. that comes across in the recording at that low resonant frequency of 107 I can really feel the cabinet 
thudding me in the chest when the frequency is higher, you know, I was doing that. Uh, it gets a little bit woofy sounding and when it's too low those palm mutes don't sound quite as meaty. One other thing that I like to do by accessing the performance screen as well is I've got a parametric EQ block in there where I normally like to pull out a little bit of 250 hertz and then I will use frequency 5 as a high cut just to smooth out the response in there and you can fine tune that to your particular amp. What I'll do is give you an example of that. I'll set the 250 control at zero and I will turn the high cut basically off and I'll bring the high cut down so it smooths stuff out then I'll pull a little bit of 250 out. You can experiment with that 250 frequency. It's probably going to be a different frequency for your cab but with this cab I find 250 is great. turn this power amp off so I don't accidentally blow my eardrums out while I'm here. As you can hear there, that 250 sweep, it's taking a little bit of that boxiness out that I really hear here in the room. And then the high cut is basically smoothing stuff out. And if you don't like fizz out of your guitar cabinet on stage, that's a great way to manage that. So using the looper, using the synth block, using the per preset performance screen, uh, you can just go and download this preset and it's all already in there and you can fine tune your Axe FX3 to work the best possible way with your cabinet and your solid state power amp. I really hope this video helped you guys out. If you want to see more, be sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.